good morning so students today we are taking up a very important topic in the fasciola hepatica and this is the reproductive system of fasciola hepatica so you may get a question on only the male reproductive system of this animal or you may get another question on the female reproductive system of fasciola so first of all students you should be knowing that fasciola hepatica is a hermaphrodite kind of animal so we have a term which is called as hermaphrodite hermaphrodite refers to an animal which is having both the female and the male reproductive systems in a single animal body so you can see, see that fasciola hepatica has got both the male and the reproductive the female reproductive organs so it has both the testes and the ovaries so we can start with these systems one by one so first of all i'll be starting with the male reproductive system now we are starting with the male reproductive system now this particular system has got six major components the very first part if we take the male reproductive system this is the testes so we have got a one pair of testes over here in fasciola hepatica so if you see this is the posterior testis and this is the anterior testis so that means it is one pair so if we take the nature of these organs these are branched tubules as you can very well see in the diagram they lie one behind the other so this is a very very important uh, characteristic of the arrangement of these testes that these are the posterior testes and these are the this is the anterior testes so this is the positioning of these particular one pair of testes now the germinal epithelium of these testes it is giving rise to the sperms inside the tubules of these organs so sperms are produced inside the tubules now if we take the second part into account this is the vasa differentia so these are the two tubes which are coming out of these testes you can very well see i am just demarcating these tubes with the help of arrows so this is the very first vas deferens from the posterior testis and this is the vas deferens from the anterior testis so this vas deferens from the posterior testis is quite long and it is going upwards both the vas are differentia they are going upwards and they are meeting at a particular place very close to the acetabulum this is the ventral sucker so these two vasa differentia they are meeting on this particular point so i'll be taking another diagram to show you the male reproductive system now in fasciola hepatica so now we know that we have got a pair of testes and two vasa differentia which are coming upwards and they are meeting at a common point near the acetabulum now i am changing the diagram now here in this diagram you can very well see that we have got two vasa differentia which are coming upwards and they are meeting at a particular place over here so this is the place where they are joining together so on the lower side we had two testes the anterior and the posterior testes that was the positioning now we have got the two vasa differentia they are joining each other 
and they are joining in the third part of the reproductive system which is the seminal vesicle so we have got the third part it is the seminal vesicle now the seminal vesicle it has got a proper function of storing the sperms so this is the function of the seminal vesicle so here you can see the seminal vesicle now in fasciola hepatica this vesicle is s shaped sac so this is very comparable to the shape of the alphabet s and it tapers anteriorly and it joins the prostatic duct now students this is the fourth part of the reproductive system now we have the prostate glands now this is a very peculiar feature of prostate glands that these are unicellular that means they are altogether different so there is a no specific prostate gland in fasciola hepatica as we see in other animals but here these glands are unicellular and they are found scattered so here in this particular diagram you you can see a number of unicellular glands which are all the prostate glands and this duct this particular duct is the prostatic duct so here you can very well see that the seminal vesicle it is opening into the prostatic duct and it is going now upwards now here what happens the prostatic fluid will be mixed into the sperms so what are going upwards from the seminal vesicle are the sperms they are the stored sperms so when they are going into the prostatic duct the prostatic fluid it is mixing with the sperms to make the semen now we have the next part or the fifth part of reproductive system this is called as serous so this is the position of the serous in fasciola hepatica so this is a kind of muscular organ which is disseminating the sperms out of the fasciola hepatica so this is our fifth part of the reproductive system so the duct the prostatic duct which was going upwards is now called as the ejaculatory duct so you can very well see that this is now termed as the ejaculatory duct inside the serous now this ejaculatory duct it is opening out as the male genital aperture so here you can see that it is opening out as the male genital aperture in the last part of the system which is the sixth part and it is called as the genital atrium so here i have written g for genital so you can very well see that it is demarcated on the very top so this is the genital atrium now what is genital atrium you should be very clear about this that this is a depression in which both the male and the female genital pores they open so if you uh, carefully see i'm just demarcating it with the green color this is a part of a female reproductive system this is the female genital pore so i am not talking about this female genital pore over here because we are talking about the male reproductive system but this pore is also opening in the genital atrium so i want to sh show you that in genital atrium both the male and the female genital pores are opening at the same place so students if we take into account 
the male reproductive system this is very very simple system so it is comprising of one pair of testes one was anterior one was the posterior testes as shown in the previous diagram then we had two vasa differentia which are coming towards the anterior side so here you can very well see then we have a seminal vesicle this is a single seminal vesicle which is storing the sperms and this seminal vesicle it is opening into the prostatic duct so this duct is in the very center you can very well see so here we have the unicellular prostate glands which are many in number which are pouring their secretions into these uh, sperms to make the semen and now this duct is called as the ejaculatory duct now it is going through the serous which is a muscular organ and which is opening out in the genital atrium as the male genital aperture so students that was the male reproductive system in fasciola hepatica i think you have understood this particular topic and now we are starting with the second part and before going for the second part i must give you one particular thing which is the serous sac this is a uh, accessory part so here you can very well see this is the serous sac now why is it the sac because i am just demarcating it with the yellow color this is the sac and it is enclosing number of structures in the male reproductive system it goes below the seminal vesicle and it is enclosing these organs so this sac is a bag like structure which is enclosing number 1 the seminal vesicle number 2 the prostate glands all the prostate glands they are inside this sac number 3 it is the prostatic duct number 4 the serous so all these four structures are present inside this sac now coming back to this diagram i am trying to show you the male reproductive system in this particular diagram first of all we have the posterior testes this is the posterior testes then we have the anterior testes then we have the two vasa differentia which are going towards the anterior side so they are joining at this place so then we have the seminal vesicle this is very very clear this is the s shaped comma shaped structure which is present near the ventral sucker and then we have the prostate glands so these are the glands then we have the ejaculatory duct and then we have the serous and it is opening out as the male genital aperture in the genital atrium so if you recall the structure of the fasciola hepatica there was a gonopore present behind the mouth so this is basically the genital atrium which is present behind the mouth in which the male and the female genital tracts they are opening and here you can very well see that on one side we have the male genital aperture on the right side we have got the female genital aperture opening into the genital atrium so students i think you are very much clear about the male reproductive system in this part of the video we are talking about the female reproductive system of fasciola hepatica so i hope you have understood the male reproductive system now here we are talking about the female reproductive system in fasciola so again the female reproductive system has got seven parts so here i am showing you the seven numbers so we are starting with the very first part as in the male reproductive system the very first part was the testes and here the very first part will be the 
ovaries. So here we have a single ovary. So we have to write ovary, not ovaries. So we have got a single ovary and here you can very well see this is a single ovary. It is shown in dotted structure. This is also branched. It is smaller than the testes and it is present on the right side. Now here you are seeing it on the left side but this is the right side of the fasciola. So you should write that ovary is present on the right side in front of the anterior testes. So here this is the testes and the ovary is present anterior to the anterior testes. So this is the position of the ovary and here the germinal epithelium it is also producing ova which are present in the tubules of the branched ovary. Students I have zoomed in to some extent to show you the structures in good form so that was the ovary that was the first part in the reproductive system and now we have the second part this is the oviduct so this is the second part it, it is coming out of the ovary onto the central position so this is the oviduct so here you can see it is a tube like structure which is, which is going downwards towards the center of the body so here you can very well see this is the oviduct which is coming out of the ovary and here I want to mention that this oviduct is joining a particular duct which is called as the median vitellian duct so I'll be talking about this particular duct uh, after a few minutes so I am just taking the third part now in the reproductive system in the female reproductive system so this is the vitellin glands so this is the third part and this is a very major part of the reproductive system so these are the vitellin glands which are found scattered all over the body of the fasciola hepatica so if you see here it is written as the vitellin glands so these glands they are numerous in number they are single celled they are on the lateral sides of the fasciola hepatica so you can very well see that these are present on both the sides of the animal and these are producing a particular secretion which is called as a yolk so these vitellin glands they are producing yolk so these glands they are round they are scattered laterally and they are producing yolk cells having a shell forming material so these are forming a shell over the zygote and they are making the capsules so this is the basic function of the secretion of the vitellin glands now here I want to mention one thing that these vitellin glands they open into the lateral longitudinal ducts so here you can see this is the lateral longitudinal duct of the left side so one duct is coming towards it is coming upwards and it is coming downwards so these are the two lateral vitellin ducts one can be said as the anterior left and the posterior left then you have this is the posterior right and this is the anterior right so we have got four longitudinal lateral vitellin ducts which are joining in the center so these two ducts they are joining in the center and these ducts after joining they are forming a transverse vitellin duct which is coming towards the center so these are the transverse vitellin ducts which are originating at the point of 
the joining of these two lateral ducts so these two transverse vitellin ducts they are coming towards the center and they are meeting in a particular reservoir which is called as a yolk reservoir and this reservoir is present in the very center of the fasciola hepatica so here you can very well see that in the very center you have the yolk reservoir so here i have demarcated it in red color so this is a yolk reservoir so all the yolk which is produced in the vitellin glands first of all posteriorly it is coming towards the middle and from anterior side they are coming downwards in the lateral longitudinal canals they are meeting together and they are forming the transverse ducts then it is coming towards the center and now it is stored in the yolk reservoir in the very center of the fasciola hepatica so from this yolk reservoir a duct is coming out which is going upwards so if you see this is a particular duct i am showing you it in the green color so this is a smaller duct which is a median vitellin duct so this green color duct is called as the median vitellin duct so students here i have again zoomed in into this diagram to show you in a better way so here you can very well see these are the small vitellin glands which are present on the periphery so these are the vitellin glands these are the anterior lateral vitellin ducts these are the two and we have the posterior vitellin ducts the lateral vitellin ducts so they are joining in the very center and from here they are making the transverse vitellin ducts and these transverse vitellin ducts they are joining in the very center and they are joining the yolk reservoir now i have shown this yolk reservoir in the red color and from this yolk reservoir a median vitellin duct which is shown here in green color it is going upwards to some extent it is a very small duct and now you can very well see that it it is joining the ov duct so if i make the ov duct again in uh, yellow color i am making it in yellow color so this is the ov duct now this duct is joining the median vitellin duct which is green in color now there is one another joining on this particular side and this is the joining of the uterus so i am demarcating it with the cream color so here this particular structure is the uterus pipe now here three things are joining in the center one the green color this is the median vitellin duct from which the yolk is coming upwards number two it is the ov duct from which the ova are dropping downwards number three it is the uterus in which the capsules are going upwards so this is a y shaped structure in the very center of the fasciola hepatica now students after this we have the fourth part of the female reproductive system which is the uterus so as you can very well see the uterus is again branched it is a pipe like structure it is a tube like structure and this is having two parts number 1 this is a narrow part which is shown here in the cream color this is a narrow part which is joining the ovary duct and then it is having a wide part in which you can see the capsules so this is 
the narrow part the very first part and this is the second broad part so these are the two parts of the uterus and finally this uterus it is opening out as the female genital aperture which can be seen on the very top so students uterus is the fourth part of the reproductive system so this is a long pipe like structures okay next we have the fifth part which is the genital atrium so as we have discussed earlier the genital atrium also so genital atrium is the depression in which the female genital aperture is opening so here on the top you can very well see the presence of the genital atrium now students we have got two more things in the female reproductive system this is number 1 or you can say the sixth number it is the mahle's gland and this is a very very important gland in fasciola hepatica and this particular gland is present around the median vitelline duct now i am trying to show you this particular gland so here on the right side it is demarcated as the mahle's gland so this gland is present over here in the very center of the fasciola hepatica where the three ducts they are joining each other this is present around this joining so these mahle's glands they are again very very important as per the reproductive system is concerned so these are again unicellular kind of glands they are many in number they are present uh, around the uh, joining of these tubes and the secretion of the mahle's glands it serves three main purposes number 1 it helps in the lubrication of the passage of the capsules so i'll be telling you how the capsules they are going and how they are forming here in this particular structure so first function of the mahle's gland secretion is lubrication second is to harden the capsules so that this secretion it hardens the outer shell of the capsule and number 3 it is the activation of the sperms so these are the three functions of the mahle's glands if we take the next part into account this is the seventh part of the reproductive system and this is called as the lorer's canal this is the lorer's canal and here you can very well see the presence of the lorer's canal and this is the canal which is present here this is the canal this is a small tube like structure which is coming out of the ov duct now this is a very very important feature of lorer's canal that this runs vertically to open on the dorsal surface now the opening of the lorer canal is on the dorsal side of the fasciola hepatica now this particular canal the lorer's canal it is also receiving the sperms now this is the main function of the lorer's canal and it is opening on the dorsal side so it can receive the sperms from the other fasciola hepatica or the other animal so that can give rise to the cross type of fertilization in fasciola hepatica so i'll be taking up the physiology of this reproductive system very soon so if we take the female reproductive system into account overall then we are first having a single ovary you can very well see that this is the ovary and this ovary has got an oviduct which is shown here in yellow color 
and third thing is the vitellin glands so these are all the vitellin glands which are producing yolk and this yolk is coming upwards and ultimately this yolk is stored in the central yolk reservoir which is shown here in red color number fourth part is the uterus so after joining of the median vitellin duct and the ov duct the third thing which joins in the center is the uterus here it is shown in the cream color so this is the narrow part of the uterus and again after that narrow part we have the broader part of the uterus which is containing capsules so you can very well see in the diagram so here on the left side we have the uterus so it is going upwards next we have the genital atrium so this uterus ultimately it is opening out as the female genital aperture on the very top in the genital atrium and the sixth part was the mahles gland so here you have the mahles gland which is present around the joining of the three tubes and it is going for three functions which we have discussed earlier and the next last part is the lorer's canal which is a small tube like structure which is opening out on the dorsal side so it can receive the sperms so students that was all about the female reproductive system of the fasciola hepatica so i think you are very much clear about the male and the female reproductive systems so these are the two major systems that can come in your uh, examination you can get a question full fledged five marks question on uh, either of the systems either male or female so you should be very particular about these systems along with the diagrams so you should be drawing these diagrams very neatly in the examinations so Thank you very much.